Morning everyone, shall we bow? Our Father and our God, creator of the universe, creator of this earth, creator of the Bahamas, creator of each and every one of us, we come before you this morning with thankful hearts. So much we take for granted, oh God, the fact that we can just wake up and do what we need to do and get ourselves ready, get our hearts ready, get our minds ready to come into your house to worship you. We just say thank you. We just say thank you for just being the kind of God that you are, in spite of us being so unworthy and so undeserving. And so, oh God, we come to give you praise this morning. We come to worship with one another, to fellowship with one another, to receive from your manservant whatever it is you have laid on his heart for us today. Oh God, we would ask a special blessing on the service as it goes forward. All that is said and done may be done decently and in order, and ultimately that you may get the honor and the glory. Bless each person who is coming. You know what their particular needs are. You know what their hurts are, what their aspirations are, what their joys are, what their sorrows are, what their challenges are, oh God. And we would ask that you would meet those needs, which, things which they need to help them to feel fulfilled and to feel that their life is worth living. But above all, God, we ask that your Holy Spirit stay close to encourage here, to, to perhaps congratulate there, and just to help your people, your children, to do what they need to do, to live comfortably, and above all, to live within your will. And so, oh God, as we go through this service, all those who will participate in whatever form or fashion, some who may merely just sit and receive the blessing which you have for them, we ask that you just confirm it People who may have come with questions, may their questions be answered. People who may, have who may have concerns, may their concerns be calmed and, and may they realize that you are still, you are still in control. Yes, yes. Those who are hurting, oh Lord, we ask that you ease those hurts, soothe those hurts. Those who have joys, this, let them bring them to you so that their joys may be multiplied. Oh God, you are such a good God. So many times, so many times, and yet, yet still we doubt. So we ask your forgiveness, O oh God. But even as we go into this service, even as we worship you, we ask that you just fill us full with whatever you want us to have to give us the ammunition that we need for the week ahead so that we may go forth and be good examples of what you want us to be, to be persons who can, by the way in which we live, we show who, whose we are and to whom we belong. And so, God, we're going to trust you for the rest of the service. Those who are coming, we ask that you would bring them safely here so that they may receive rich blessings from fellowshipping with your people. We ask this in the name of your precious son, Jesus, and for his sake. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Heather, for that moving prayer. Our first hymn of praise is going to be hymn number 583, O Zion Haste.
Our responsive reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. I'm going to call on Sister Ruth. Pleasant good morning, church. The responsive reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. We will read responsively. Let's begin. In the year that King Uzziah died, I, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. And he said, uh, and he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this had touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. The last verse together, please. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. Amen. Thank you, Sister Ruth, on such short notice. Our prayer song is hymn number 450. Notice 
a personal pronoun. I come to you today. Well, good morning to all. So much Carmen here, the young Anderson role. She conducts the service. So much our young people. We are talking about a new church year. They're looking for a theme. I got my own personal theme. Back to school, back to church. Yeah. You know, there was an emphasis, we haven't back to school this, back to school this. We need to back to church. Yeah. For morning those in Zoom land, if you can't come out, I can understand. But it's back to the house of God. Yeah. A special good morning to you and all those are here. And I want you to feel good. Coming here, it means whose side you are on. And that you are a citizen of the kingdom of God, a kingdom that has no end. Let's pray. Take me to the king. My heart torn in pieces is my offering. Take me to the throne and leave me there alone that I may gaze upon his glory and sing to him the song. Take all of us to the King of Kings. Father God, as we come in your presence, we honor your great name as we sang. Your name is so wonderful. And we need us pray that your will be done in all of our lives. We can trust you. You know what you're doing. We come in the precious name of Jesus Christ, whose death and burial and resurrection we commemorate today, straight to the Baptist denomination, and maybe several others. It's in his powerful name we come. And on all requests were not verbalized, allow me to stand in proxy for everybody to say thank you. For this week, for the month, this new month, even from a birch to now, we realize more and more that you are the God of the good times and the God also of the bad times. You have promised never to leave us. And I just pray that all of us will get to trust you even in the most difficult times. Because we're either in a storm, coming out of one, or getting ready to get in one. And so I lift up every unspoken request here this morning to you. As I stand in proxy for those here and even those in Zoom land. And I pray that, as I mentioned earlier, Father God, that may all our people realize that is back to the building again, back to your house. We understand for those who cannot come because of some challenges, but we pray for all our young people, middle-aged and all those who can come to your house. May they realize there's something special about your house, that we come to worship you. As we said thank you this morning for those who may be sick, we request, we bring them all to you. Some people in bed of affliction, maybe in a hospital, maybe at home. We bring doctors and nurses and all those caretakers, even family members to you in a special way. Give them strength and give them the, the, the ability and, and the compassion to serve. Maybe all who are Christians use your theme. We come not to be served, but we come to serve. There's a joy when we can help others. And so, Father God, go through all the Bahamas, and even those of us who are family, who are in foreign places, meet their medical needs, Lord. Then there's so many people who are bereaved, Lord. Oh, it seemed to be too much. The paper on Thursday, Father God, full. We bring those people to you. We bring the feast family to you, Karen and all the other people to you, Lord. Only you can comfort. But maybe reach the stage where we will say, you give and you take. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And maybe we realize in every death there's a resurrection. And one is that you will come when all these former things will be passed away. There are people who want to thank you maybe for travel and mercy. There were some of us who were away. And those, we thank you that you have taken us over this large body of water and safety on the land. And we do not take this for granted. You have protected us from COVID-19 and from ills and from evil and brought us here again. 
Then there are those who want to request for our school as it's open. I want to bring all our children to you, God, from K stream straight up. Those here and those away, may we realize that we can trust you with our children. Let it come from our hearts, from our lips, that we put our children in your hands. Nobody can protect like you, Lord. Nobody can provide like you. And the more difficult the situation is seemed, that's the better you work. And so we apologize right now for the times that we, we just get bent out of shape because of troubles. And sometimes we give the world the, they just get the thought, an impression that our problems are bigger than you. But for every problem that might have been verbalized here this morning, I bring every man, woman, boy, and girl to you. Please fix what need to be fixed. And then one of my special requests as I end this prayer, Father God, is that lost people in our families, people not to assign, will be saved. And that they will be a family altar in every home. I don't know, you have placed that in my spirit that as a family we need to leave a time every day for you. We are so busy with everything. We have about 16 hours, Father God. Let us put some time that the family not worship you singly, but that's the time that the family could come together without any fuss, without any feel as if they're losing something, to spend some time with you. Let that be the way forward, Lord. Hear my cry. I mentioned that from the bottom of my heart, that we need to spend more time with you. Oh, let our children see how important you are to us. Bless us. Fix what needs to be fixed. Bless temple. Bless providence. Bless central. Bless all the pastors. And whatever they may call themselves today, may souls be saved today. Even as your word goes forth, may we all worship you in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Thank you, Pastor Moss. Please follow along with me in your bulletins as I go through the announcements. Our Wednesday night by prayer and Bible study is held at 7 p.m. on soon. The ID is 839-0453-8547 and the passcode is 009224. The topic is set free, stay free, and it's taken from Ephesians 2, 11 through 22, Galatians 3, verse 1. And the homework that you have to do for this week is read Acts 15, verses 13 to 21, and list points that James made and his contribution to the discussion. Our prayer concerns. Let us continue to pray for those who remain shut in from the pandemic and from natural causes. We also pray for our nation's children and teacher, teachers as they head back to school. Condolences to the McDonald, Roberts, Cambridge, and Feast families on the passing of Sister Karen's sister, Monique. Birthday observances. A belated happy birthday goes out to Tangela Bain Forbes and Annie Stewart, also brother Ulrich, in, who lives in the Cameroons. On the 5th, we have Cleophas Longley and Trevon Seymour. On the 9th, Sydney Chad Roll. And on the 10th, we have Jaden Feast. Thanks to Pastor Moss for a fresh challenge to love God extravagantly. We are looking forward to all the auxiliaries or ministries regrouping in October, which is the new church year. And we ask that you please pray and ask the Lord how and where he places to use you so that you can be ready for your posting when he directs. A list of places of service, service is printed on the back of this bulletin today. Oh, let's see that. Next Sunday, in the will of the Lord, you will receive a form on which you will be asked to indicate where you feel God is directing you to work in the church and we will offer training in your area of choice. So as we look towards the new church here in October, think about your gifts and talents that you would like to present. 
and be useful to the church. Thank you for following along with me, and I'd like to now say welcome to church, everyone. And I hope that today is a blessing to you and this service. We know this upcoming season is the fall season here, and we don't really celebrate fall in the Bahamas, but I know it's getting close to the Christmas, and I can feel it. Our ushers for today are Sister Woods' team, the 11th, and Sister Bain team on the 16th. Our thought is, our thought for the day, sorry, is service should come from the heart, and that is from Reverend Denzel Care. Thank you for listening. Our offertory hymn is hymn number 571, Let Others See Jesus in You. for all you have done for us. And Father God, we pray that whatever we give you back, part of what you give to us, it will help for your kingdom here on earth. In Jesus' name and for his sake, amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Renami. stand for the scripture reading. I'm going to ask Sister Jackie to come and read that, please. It's taken from Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 5. Yes, ma'am. Chapter 12, verses 1 to 5. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that he may prove what is 
that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say, the, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God had dealt to every man the measure of faith. For us, we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. So we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one member one of another. The word of the Lord. Thank you, Sister Jackie. You may be seated. At this time, we're going to have a medley of songs. The first hymn is hymn number 132. We're going to sing the first and last verse. sing the whole song.
want to turn over to hymn number 134, Jesus Paid It All, first and last verses. you will hear will be that of Pastor Jeffrey Wood, and our topic for today is preparation for service to God. Hope that the word is a blessing to you. I want to thank uh, Sister Karen for sitting in for Sister Dolores, who is not uh, feeling well. Uh, a voice, she has voice difficulties, and um, she asks that we have someone to sit in for her until um, such time as she can regain her voice. And so, um, my sister Karen, with uh, her, Karen, I was very quick to say yes when I asked. And of course, you saw her performing this morning. I want to say yeah, thanks. Amen. I think it's the first time we ever had worship leader and announcer the same person. <laughs> Keep doing new things, eh? New, new experiences. I'm sure that uh, 
you've had the um, reason for the appeal on the back of the uh, bulletin explained to you. Um, we met and uh, we're trying to work through um, getting things set up so everybody will have and find a place of service. And um, I just want to reiterate that you take this um, sheet, the appeal here, go over it, and ask the Lord, where can you best serve? Uh, Nobody is exempted from not serving. The question is, where? <laughs> and where would you serve? Will you, do you see, hear God directing you to the physical plant or the Christian education, working with the youth, transportation, mainly the bus ministry, music. I think we have here the choirs and praise team. And, and I'm sure there are going to be other aspects of music and finance, uh, hospitality, the usher board, uh, media and prayer. Now, not because prayer is at the bottom, it means it's the least significant. <laughs> It's uh, as significant as any of the others or more than because we're going to have to be depending upon prayers to uh, um, keep, keep the wheels rolling. So if you feel God leading you into the area of being a specific prayer group to keep the work going, then we'd like to have you serving there. So in keeping with that, um, I just wanted to talk a little bit this morning about preparation for service to God. If you're going to serve God, you've got to get ready, right? Yes. Got to get ready to serve him. Or have to be ready. Be ready. And uh, the question is... Um, how do, you, how do you get ready? How do you prepare to serve God? And it just doesn't happen overnight. But I said that you have to be intentional about uh, one has to be. Let me just read what I have. In order to truly serve God, one must be intentional about one's service. And intentional means that it has to be planned in advance. Can't just happen. It has to be planned in advance. And then it has to be deliberate. Can be in and not sure and just have to be deliberate about it. And cannot be half-hearted. It has to be wholeheartedly done wholeheartedly. And that's what uh, intentional, that's what I mean when I said we need to be intentional about uh, service. And there are three things that I want to talk about today from Romans 12, 1 through 5. Three things. The first one is that we need to Surrender totally to God. One needs to surrender totally to God. Can't have one foot in and one foot out. That ain't gonna work. We need total surrender to God. That's Romans 12 and 1. The next thing that we would need, according to the Apostle Paul, is to stay away from the world's molds or the, the world's influences. Stay away from the world's molds or the world's influences. 
And that's Romans 12, 2. And the third thing that is for today, we need to serve God out of a sense of gratitude. Let our service be our way of saying thanks. I am deeply appreciative of all that you have done, all that you are doing, and all that I know you will do. And one of the things that's lost present day is a sense of gratitude. Yeah. We've, we've let our children come to think that we have to do it. Yes. And so they just take it. Yes. We've let our spouses think yes. we have to do it. Yes. Just take it. Yes. We've let our family members think we're obligated. We're obligated to do it anybody. You do, you do it out of a heart of love. Yes. Yes. So at least it should bounce back with a thank you. And we need to serve because we're grateful. We're grateful to God. Let's pray. Our Father, thank you so very much for this day and the this is a peaceful day that you've given us. All we need to do is to pause and to worship you in spirit and in truth. And God, we pray that you'll take these few words that will be spoken on your behalf this morning and apply them to our hearts so that we could be the best possible workers this year we can, as we can be. And God, we thank you in advance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Apostle Paul was writing to the church in Rome and to remind them of their, response, their, their service responsibility and they should try to get it right. And I'm glad they did that because I have something to follow in preaching this morning. Say, Temple, let's get it right. <laughs> but the first thing he said to them to the Roman uh, church is that you're going to have to surrender totally to God. Yes. You can't live your life halfway one time and yes. halfway the other. You can't vacillate yes. between God and the world. You have to decide which one you're with. Because if you seek to serve God with one foot in the world and one in the church, you ain't, God's not going to get much out of you, if yes. anything yes. at all. Yes. And you're not going to be happy. Yes. God made you so that you wouldn't be. And so you, Paul, the Apostle Paul is saying here, surrender totally to God. Oh, I just want to thank Pastor Moss for uh, last Sunday, uh, you know, challenging us uh, to see and to serve and to love God in a new uh, way. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Moss. Apostle Paul says in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, I beseech you, therefore, based on what has already gone ahead from chapter 1 to chapter 11, I beseech you, brethren, brothers and sisters, 
fellow Christians. But by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And the word beseech could be the same thing as I beg you. I plead with you. I appeal to you, pretty please. Will you present um, through the mercies of God, that is, all that God has done for you? Would you respond by presenting your bodies to Him as a living sacrifice? As I was doing this, I thought, how come in order for God to appreciate the sacrifices of animals, goats, and bulls, and heifers, and birds, they have to be dead? But here, he's saying, in order for me to priest, uh, to appreciate the sacrifice of people has to be alive. I don't want you when you're dead. I don't want you when the worms are eating your body or you've gone through total decay. That's there's no joy to me as a human being. I want you now. While the blood's running warm in your body, while you can run and jump and smile and do all the other things. I want the best of your life. I want you to sacrifice that. Put that on the altar of sacrifice. That's what I want from you. While you are alive. And I want you, your life to be holy. I want you to put a holy life on that. I want you to just come with old sinful life. You ask for forgiveness and da da da. Get deal with your sin. So that when you come to me, when you, when you give me a life, it's a holy life. It's a holy life. You can't just throw anything to God. Yes. God deserves the best. And you have to be the best possible sacrifice you could be. when you come to God. It's my all on the altar of sacrifice. Not only does it have to be holy, it has to be acceptable unto God. Remember Cain, Abel, one brought just any kind of sacrifice and it was not acceptable. To God. The other, his sacrifice was intentional, was planned, and God accepted it. And so I want to say to each of us this morning let's be intentional about our sacrifice to God, about what we give. To God. And I like the term, which is your reasonable service. You know what Paul is saying? That's the least you could do. God's not asking for something out of your realm of your possibility. At least you can give him your body. that on the altar 
Not a dead body, but a living, holy body. A body that's acceptable, that God can accept, and ex receive, and make God happy. You know what it is to be able to make the creator bring joy yes. to God? Yes. And so we have the Apostle Paul saying, just just surrender totally, God. Just yes. just give it to God. Yes. Not only give him uh, you know the total, but give him the best. That you can give him. Don't, folk, don't treat God like somebody who's only due to the scraps of your life. Don't throw the scraps of your life to God. Give him the very, very best. And you know why? Because he gave you his best. And he's still giving you new every morning is God's love. Awaking and uprising proof. So every morning God gives your body the go ahead. And if he cuts it off, you'll be in the obituary column next week. Or maybe you could catch Thursday coming. So the mere fact that you're alive every day means that God is giving you his best. He's giving you permission to go on living in his world. Permission to have to eat of his food and drink of his water. Breathe in his air. Let's move on. The second thing I just want to say, the Apostle Paul said to the church, at the Roman Christians, if you're going to be prepared to serve God, or if you're going to prepare to serve God, you're going to have to stay away from the world's molds, yeah. the world's influence. For we tend to think sometimes that the world is only after our children. The world is after us too. Watch the TV ads. Listen to the radio. Listen to some of these programs. The world is after remolding you or molding you into its whatever figure, how it wants you. So the Apostle Paul says, and be not conformed to this world. Stay away from the influences of this world. Stay away. Because they're strong. And they will suck you in. Even if you go on the edge, it's so, they're so powerful. They'll pull you in. And the intention of the world is to destroy you. The world's intention is opposite to God's. God wants you to be all that you can be. God wants you to be the greatest person you could be. The world's, no, I want to destroy you. What did Jesus say? That the evil one came to do what? Kill, steal, and destroy. That's the world's plan for you, you know. They paint it up and cover it up and show it forth and 
nice ways, but if you raise the color, you will see under the uh, kill, steal, yes. destroy. Yes. And Jesus said the world is, is in opposition to him. Yes. So if you're for him, the world is in opposition to you and yes. to me. So Paul said, number one, don't be conformed to this world. Conformity to the world is dangerous. So what do I do then, Paul? He said, but forget about that conformity to the world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Keep your thoughts high. Keep your thoughts pure. Keep your thoughts centered on heaven. Yes, yes. Lots of stuff that will try to keep our thoughts down here. House and car and status and what else? All these other stuff. Use the world's stuff. Use it. But don't let it use you. Don't let it hold on to you. In fact, make sure that you're, you're focused in heaven where, where you sit, where, where you are in Christ, and Christ sits at the right hand of the Father. Let our behavior be heavenly, not earthly. Be influenced by heaven. We must practice transformation, changing. Every time, say, we feel ourselves being pulled toward the world, every time we slip, every time we make a mistake, we need to transform our thinking yes. and get back to where we need to be. Keep renewing the mind. Uh, so I was trying to think it through the, uh, earlier this morning. Um, someone said transformation has to do with um, a thermostat and a thermometer. Be a thermostat, not a thermometer. A thermometer just follows what's in the environment. If the temperature goes up, the thermometer what? Goes up. Temperature comes down, the thermometer comes down. The, if you're not careful, the world will have you behaving like a yo-yo. Yes, yes, yes. One moment up, yes. one moment down. Yes. Another moment in between. Up, down, in between. So you need to be a thermostat. A thermostat sets yes, yes, yes. the temperature at once for the environment. <laughs> and I go. Yes, thermostat puts it where it needs to be. Not, follow, not following the environment. It sets the standard. I want you to be 73 degrees so the thermometer sets it at 73. Be, not the thermometer, the thermostat. Be thermostats. Transform. That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. When you do that, when you behave like a thermostat, you will certainly prove God's acceptable will for your life. 
And God's will means you'll know where it is that God wants you to go. Where, when, how, and the like. And you can't serve if you don't know God's will for your life. Can't serve. The third thing we want, first we said, surrender totally to God. Stay away from the world's moles and influence. And then Romans 12, 3 to 5 says, serve out of a sense of gratitude. We touched on that earlier. When you serve, serve out of a sense of gratitude. Put others above self. Wow. Verse 3. For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. Wow. So many people go around town, this me now. You don't know who I is, eh? I'm up here, you're down there. I've arrived, you, you haven't even started yet. This me. Now that's very much a small island, small country syndrome so the apostle Paul said be extremely careful to serve out of a sense of gratitude <clears throat> we may ask the apostle Paul why so why Why you say that? Why, what, what does gratitude have to do with my service? He would say a whole lot. A whole lot. He said it has to do with, uh, <clears throat> you need to be grateful for God's gift of salvation. Are you, are you grateful that God saved you? Where did God have to go to find you? Out of what ditch did God pull you? Out of which sin hole did God find, have to pull you, get you out? Call you. You don't want to come out here. Though. Come get you. And even if it was not that bad, God still had to go and find you because you were lost in trespasses and sin. And he came because he loves, loved us. He still loves us. And he gave his only begotten son to die for us. God's gift of grace. God should have just put us all in a big incinerator and burn us up and start afresh. Create some new good people. Because <laughs> we were really messed up. Adam and from beginning from Adam and Eve, just messed up. And down through the years, instead of getting better, Got worse. But God, in and through His love and His grace, it was mercy and His grace, saved us. Wow. What a rescue. What a rescue. Now, I don't know how you categorize yours, but mine is at the top of the list. 
I am forever grateful for the cross. I'm forever grateful that God took time out to find me in the eighth grade and turn my life around. Hasn't been the same since. Praise God. Uh, you know, I think about all of the stuff God saved me from. Every one of my good friends died from alcohol and, and, and all messed up lives, venereal diseases and stuff. All of my close friends. Just about. God, thank you for saving me because I would have been in that number. What about you? Do you have some reason to give God thanks for your salvation? Do, do, you, do you realize where you would have been, Brother Feast? God didn't get there and block the road and change your direction. This way. This way. And block off that way. Oh, Sister Nat, I'm so glad. <laughs> I am so glad that Jesus saved me. I don't know what he's doing all the way down in Turks and Caicos, but I'm not questioning that. He just came. He came for me. <laughs> I don't know where you were. He came there for you. Also, because of God's gift of faith. Without faith, we would not have been able to believe. Without faith, life will be a big mess today. If you didn't have faith in God, when the darkness comes, that God will come, will come through the darkness to find you and to do for you what you need done. We have faith and trust that tomorrow is okay because it's in the hands of God. So whether I'm alive or whether I'm dead, things are going to be okay because of my faith and my trust in God. And God has given each of us a gift of faith Take care of our mistrust. Take care of our doubt. Our fears. You know, some people are afraid to wake up. Yes. Don't know what tomorrow holds. But doesn't make a difference what tomorrow holds because I know who holds tomorrow. I'm not worrying about what tomorrow holds. I'm just glad about who holds tomorrow. And I know he holds tomorrow. And not only does he hold tomorrow, he holds my hand. And he will walk me through tomorrow. And even if that walk takes me through the valley of the shadow of death, I'm still okay. Because he knows the way. Another reason for our gratitude should be because of God's gift of oneness in the body of Christ. We've been looking at that. You know what it is for God to take people from all over the place, all kinds of bad ways, messed up people, drunk people, drug people, base house people, and transform them and put them in the body of Christ and make them one new person. 
I don't know if you got it, but our oneness in Christ. You belong to me, I belong to you, we belong to each other. And God did that when he placed us in the body of Jesus Christ. And nobody is better than anybody. I don't care what you have or what you don't have. God doesn't measure by what you have. God measures by your heart. God looks on the inside while man is busy looking on the outside. God's not concerned. About, you know, a lot of people are trying to uh, make it, you know, name it, claim all this kind of stuff like that's God's main purpose for your life. No! God's not influenced by what you have or don't have. God's influenced by your heart. As a man thinketh, so is he. Not what a man has, so is he, but as a man thinketh. His obedience to God, that's what makes the difference. Remember Saul? Saul was this big, towering guy. Saul's armor was bigger than anybody else's. And Saul was a wizard when it came to fighting. He was a soldier plus. He was Israel's king. They looked up to him. Look at Saul. Don't mess with Saul, or you'll get what's coming to you. And that got him pumped up with pride and the like. And God came along and said, Israel, you might be impressed with Saul's height. You might be impressed with Saul's armor. You might be impressed with Saul's ability to fight. You might be impressed with him, but I'm not impressed with him because only what you're impressed because of what you see. I'm impressed because of what you can't see. I could see his heart, and his heart's not right. And so, God has made us all one in the body of Christ. I just want to close. I wrote. Because of total surrender, because of the need to stay away from the world's holes. Because we serve out of a sense of gratitude. There are a whole lot of places of service in the church just waiting for you to claim them. They're there waiting for you to claim them. So I urge you to give some thought and some prayer to where you can be of greatest service. Give some thought, give some prayer to where you could be of greatest service. Is it at the physical plant? Is it Christian education? Is it youth? Is it transportation? Music, it's finance, is it hospitality, hospitality, is it the usher board, is it media, is it prayer, or maybe even a couple of these. If you need further information, it says, 
please see uh, Sister Annette Farkerson, who's driving this, been chosen to drive this Pastor Moss. And of course, you can speak to me if you can't find them. But Father, thank you so very much for this day and your word and open hearts. I pray that we have heard from you. I pray, Father, that anything that you do not want to find place, rest in people's lives, you will re erase that. But those things, God, that you want them to receive and to meditate upon, think upon, and respond intentionally, I pray that you'll do just that. Father, as we look forward to a great year ahead of us, it cannot and will not happen unless we have willing workers, intentional workers. And so God, again I ask that you'll begin working, or continue to work on hearts. And as a result, we'll have the greatest year ever. We give you the praise, we give you the honor, we give you the glory, even for the committee that is doing this. I pray for each one. I commit and commend them to you that your will may be done, not only in their lives, but done in other people's lives through their efforts. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm just gonna sing two stanzas of 591. Hark the voice of Jesus calling. that this will help you to crystallize your thought, your decision, or at least start thinking about it. 591. Stand, please.
Turn to our responsive reading 698. If you have a book, may you. And it's an account of the Lord's Supper as um, Apostle Paul understood it and shared it from in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and 1 Timothy 1. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, Whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. And together we read, Now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> We've come to this uh, ninth time in observing the Lord's Supper, or oh, ninth month, observance of the Lord's Supper. And so we are going to ask uh, Brother David and Pastor Moss uh, to do the prayers. Um, David, do the prayer for the bread and pass the moss for the Let us pray. Wine. Heavenly Father, I give you thanks and praise for this day, Lord. This is the day that you have made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it, Father. As we take this bread, Lord, of your bro token of your broken body, Lord, let us take it in remembrance of your broken body, Father. And as we eat this bread, Father, may we have a remembrance of your suffering, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's pray. Father and God, we thank you so much for the message today. May each one of us see ourselves as a servant in the most important ministry in the world, mm. the kingdom of God. May we see it's a privilege to serve you. Yes. And may each one of us say as we sang, here am I, send me. Amen. Not send the other person, Lord, mm. but send me. Father, as we come this ninth time in this year, 
we make a covenant with you, we'll never forget. We'll always remember your blood that you shed for us. May no one in this place take this unworthily. We will understand what it really means. And we can only say thanks. And how can it be that thou, my God, shall die for me? And so we remember the blood that flowed from your head, your hands, side, feet. The blood that cleanses us from all of our sins. The blood that connects us with you. Thank you. May we see this as a testimony, as in your word, identify with your death and your second coming until you arrive. Hear our prayer. Thank you again for your love. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Mr. Jesus and the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he break it and said take eat this is my body which is broken for you this do in remembrance of let us eat in his memory. After the same manner, also he took the cup and it sucked, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's drink in remembrance of our Lord. Because we ate from the broken body of our Lord, we drank of the shed blood of our Lord. We have just shown the Lord's death on 
Angelica. God, we are so very, very grateful for this opportunity to come and remember the great sacrifice that Jesus made for us. We trust that our response will be pleasing to you. And Father, we just pray that as we go from this place, we will go with your blessings. We will go thinking even more, how can we best say thanks? How can we best serve? Lord, we just give you permission today to send your Holy Spirit to guide us into the right place with the right attitude. We will thank you for it. We ask all these blessings in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. day tomorrow, your birthday, we'll be there, just let us know what time the party, we'll be there to collect our cake, and I'll, and I'll write them all. <laughs>